Hello. So today I'm doing another video on games I own that have only that I've only played once. So next is uh, level seven Omega Protocol. I had last played this in 2016. So I think it was the middle of 2016, according to Board Game Geek logged plays. So almost five years ago. Um, again, as usual with these games I haven't played in a long time, I really didn't. Uh, remember a whole lot about it. I did go ahead and read the rules and uh, play through this yesterday so I would have the rules down. <laughs> I will say, and I don't remember this from five years ago, but uh, I, I did find, uh, I don't know, my first read through of the rules, it didn't seem too confusing, but I, as I was playing, it seemed like I had to uh, refer to the rules uh, quite a bit. Um, so, Maybe I'm just getting older <laughs> and these things are more confusing to me. I'm not sure, but I uh, uh, just kind of thought for me, at least this time, the rule book uh, didn't seem great. Now, um, I think my uh, version of this game is, um, is the original version, um, I think, from kind of reading on some forums on Board Game Geek that... Uh, there has been another version of this game released, a Kickstarter or something. So maybe the rules have been updated and maybe a little more streamlined. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to be going off the rules that came with this version of the game. No expansion or anything. So uh, I'll give you a little bit more of my thoughts at the end. But uh, let's get to setup. Uh, then I'll show you how to play and uh, do a couple of example turns. All right, the first thing you do in setup is uh, choose a mission out of this mission guide. I think there's nine missions that come in here. Um, they can be played individually or you can play them uh, together as a campaign. I guess with a tweak on some of the rules, um, I just played the first mission, which is the recommended mission. Um, so let's get to that. So first thing after picking your mission, there'll be a setup diagram of how to assemble the map. Um, so you, it'll show you what tiles to get, um, where to place doors, and that kind of thing. So that's the first thing you do. And it also shows you where to put investigate markers. So, uh, as you can see, the, mat, the setup diagram shows you the tiles you need, and then they each are labeled, you know, like that, 9A. Some of them are kind of hard to see, 11A. So you just look at the diagram in the map, then you assemble your map. Um, I don't have the doors on here yet, and I'll show why. Next, after assembling your map, you choose who's going to be the overseer. So this is a one-against-many game, so you'll have... One player um, who will be the overseer, you know, controlling the bad guys, aliens, or clones, or whatever they are. And then you'll have one player that's playing the commandos um, who are uh, infiltrating, you know, the base here and have some ob objective that they've got to do. So, um, so if you're just playing two players... Um, then one player will be the overseer and one player will play three or more commandos. If you're playing three players, then one player plays the overseer and each of the other players plays two commandos each. And then if you're playing a uh, four, five, or six player game, one player will be the overseer and the other players will each control one commando. Now, since I was playing this solo, um, I played one as the overseer, and then I played three commandos. All right, next you'll get your adrenaline tokens and wound tokens and just put them in piles near the board. You'll shuffle up this investigate deck and then just put it uh, somewhere near the board. I just like putting it here in the center of this map. It's easy to get to. Then you put the round tracker track up here and put the primary uh, round tracker token, which is this purple one. There's uh, some other uh, round tracker tokens, I guess, are used for different missions. But for this 
first mission, um, you just use this one. So you use that on the track to designate the turns, the round. All right, next, the overseer will create his dashboard, which basically gives him the powers that he's going to have for this mission. So uh, there's different dashboard pieces that uh, you'll assemble into your dashboard. You can see there's some others that are not used in this first mission. And you'll know which ones you have available. It uh, shows you which ones you'll have available in the mission guide. You know, so this one is mission one, knock, knock, who's there. And here it specifies which uh, dashboard tiles you'll use for this mission. And you can see they're labeled so you know which ones um, the mission specified. That's the ones you grab and make your dashboard. All right, the mission setup guide also tells the overseer what uh, enemies he'll have available to him. Um, so for this first mission, he gets 10 rogue clones and ten, or, uh, 8 warrior clones. So the overseer will take the cards for those uh, enemies that he's going to have um, available to him and then takes the appropriate figures. Now, <laughs> these figures have... Uh, a terrible paint job I did six years ago when I opened the box and looked at this paint job I was like oh well that wasn't good but uh, anyway he'll have to ignore that um, everything's really dark even the even the uh, commandos but I guess you know the pictures of the commandos they're all pretty much dark so I guess I was trying to uh, emulate that but uh, not good. I was not not uh, happy uh, when I saw the figure. So anyway, um, the games, the figures that come with the game are not painted. I just did a very mediocre job painting these. But anyway, you gather the figures um, that the setup guide showed you were going to use. So warrior clones, which are these, and uh, rogue clones, which are these. All right, next the overseer puts the door markers on the map, uh, separating the map into different rooms. Um, so it says you have access to all the door markers unless specified other, otherwise. Um, and if it is specified otherwise in the mission setup, which this one does, it says you get one locked, one jammed, and one sort cir short circuit. And then other than that, you can use the unlocked doors. So... You pick those um, that are specified uh, for your mission. So these are what the door markers look like. Um, I need one locked, one jammed, and one short circuit. And those will just give the uh, commandos. They'll have to pass a, a test to get through those. And then I need a couple of unlocked. Um, and those that commandos can just open without any kind of test. So the overseer will gather, gather those doors. Um, and then place them how, however he wants to um, in the location specified on the map. But of course he can put the locked and the jammed and the short circuit uh, however he wants. So I've placed those doors um, on the map as specified in the mission setup. And then that separates the maps into rooms. So everything on this side of the door is a room. Everything on this side of this door is a room. Everything between these doors is a room. Everything between these doors is a room. And so forth. So, so this is all one room here. And then this is all one room. All right, uh, next you'll uh, sort the room cards according to uh, the mission setup and place room stacks in each of your rooms. And what the room cards do is uh, when uh, commandos enter a room, you'll re re <coughs> reveal the stack in that room. And those room stacks will... Um, spawn enemies or put obstacles of some sort so um, first thing you do 
Let's look at the mission setup and it will show you what the rules are for and what cards you need for the room stack. So here it says one room will need faulty intel and recon patrol. So you go through the room card deck and find those. You'll see that root recon patrol. Recon Patrol will spawn um, two rogue clones and one warrior clone and uh, faulty intel um, We'll flip over an intel tile and we'll explain more about that later But let me go ahead and get all the cards set up for these different uh, room stacks So next I need corrosive gas and flanking party all right, so you'll see I should have five stacks, one, two, three, four, five, that contain those cards. And I've got those five stacks here, one, two, three, four, five. All right, then you'll notice there's some additional rules down here. It said the mission uses the office and A-lift objective cards. So I've got those, uh, they were in the room cards also, so I've got those out. Now these will be objectives that the uh, commandos are trying to find, so rooms that the commandos are trying to find as part of their mission. And then it says for the four room stacks going into rooms with objective zones. Now objective zones on the mission setup are here. You'll see they have this blue. So there's four of those rooms that are objective zones, or that will have objective zones. So for the four stacks going into those um, objective zones, add either an objective card, which is going to be that A-lift or office, or a clear card. And the clear cards just have nothing on them. So now you decide which stack uh, you, know, you want to put, which stacks you want going into what room. Um, so we'll just say we're going to put the office there the a lift there and we'll put a clear here and a clear here so these stacks have to go into the rooms with objective zones which we know um, one of them is this room so let's put the stack with our uh, a lift there um, we know one of the objective zones is up here so we'll put our stack with our office there one with an objective zone is here so we'll put one with a clear there and one with an objective zone is here so we'll put the other clear there and then our last stack just goes in this room now uh, this one here is the room where the uh, commandos will enter and you can see that's shown on the map here it's got the commando uh, entrance tile um, there all right so anyway we've got all our room stacks set up um, with the room cards and then the overseer will take his starting energy to create a starting energy pool and it shows that his energy pool minimum is the number of commandos times two. So in this case, I'm playing with three commandos, so he'll start with six uh, adrenaline or energy. And that's these, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So the overseer uh, just puts those in his uh, play area somewhere. All right, then the uh, commando players will each decide what commando they want to play. Um, I'm playing with the team leader, the countermeasure specialist, and the rifleman. Uh, I think there's also, uh, let's see, um, reconnaissance and heavy support are the commandos that come in the base game or version of the game that I have. So anyway, I'm going to do the team leader, countermeasure specialist, rifleman. Um, each player will decide you know which one they want to do then they'll take the appropriate uh, figure that goes um, with that uh, character 
They'll also take the kit cards that go with that character, and you can see, um, so the rifleman will take all the kit cards that uh, go with the rifleman. Quite a few for him. And again, the countermeasure specialist will take the cards that go with him, so let me get that done. All right, so my team leader has his kit cards, countermeasure specialist has his, and the rifleman has his. Then each character has a set of stance cards. Again, you look at the bottom, these uh, three are for the rifleman, so uh, let me get those for each character. All right, so I got the rifleman stance cards, countermeasure specialist stance card, and the team leader stance cards. Besides each uh, figure's um, specific kit cards, there's also a deck of common kit cards that are available. So next, each um, commando will choose what kit he wants to have. So from his own unique kit deck, and from the common kit deck, he can spend up to six points. And the point values are located here. <clears throat> like for this hobbler drone, that would take two of the rifleman's six points. So he goes through all his kit cards, as well as if he wants anything out of the common kit deck, and picks six points worth of kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for each one. All right, so for my rifleman, I took this Vent Rat Drones Advanced Med Pack from the Common. He took it Enhanced Targeting, and then he replaced his basic uh, weapon with this one. So that added a 2, 4, 5, 6. Countermeasure Specialist took an Armor Upgrade from the Common. Then from his own, he took Precognition, Guidance, and from the common, he took a med pack. And my team leader took uh, fire, take down that threat from his unique deck. And from the common, he took enhanced targeting and med pack. And each of these kit cards kind of specify when they can be used at any time or you know, as an action on your turn. And some of them have a cost to play, which we haven't gotten into spending uh, adrenaline for actions but um, over here on the right side the ones that have a cost you'll see what that is two adrenaline one two whereas this one doesn't have uh, any cost all right then the commandos will place their figures on the starting tile of the map which i've done there and that completes setup so now we're finally ready to play so how do you win the game? Well, um, each mission is different, but for this mission, the commandos win if they retrieve the data, which is in that uh, office. So you'll see there's an event, um, office found after the room contained the office objective is revealed. Um, oh, well, those are events that help the overseer, but uh, here we go. A commando must be on the office objective, and remember... <laughs> We place that office room card in one of the rooms, so when that's revealed, then the office objective tile will be placed. We put that office in this room, so um, when that card is revealed, then the office objective tile will be placed here where objective tiles are. And so if a commando is on the is on the office objective marker and increases adrenaline by one so spins one adrenaline he retrie retrieves the data and then to win the commandos win if they retrieve the data and move um, more than half of the commandos exit through the a-lift which the a-lift if you remember was another one of the cards we put in the room card stacks and when that one's revealed then you'll put that objective tile um, well, actually, I think we put that in this room, so then that objective tile would be placed there. So, for the way we set up this mission, for the commandos to win, they would have to come in this room, which will reveal the office, go in that office, um, spend a, an adrenaline, 
to get the data which is just going to be an objective token and then they'll have to move back through here reveal the a lift um, which will place that objective tile and then at least half of the uh, um, commandos will have to get on that tile to win and the uh, overseer wins if he kills at least half of the commandos so for us for me playing with three commandos he would have to kill two so that's how for this mission knock knock who's there how the commandos win and how the uh, overseer wins but how do you actually play the game well the first thing you have is the timer phase and in every round but the first round when you have the timer phase you'll advance the token so in the first round you don't do that since it's the beginning of the game but uh, the next round you advance it now what's the purpose of the timer well that depends again on the mission you'll see in this mission that I'm playing that uh, at the start of the eighth round or after both rooms containing the office and a lift are revealed then the crisis point is triggered and the clones get to add more dice to their rolls and some other benefits but so each mission will probably have some kind of crisis point or something that occurs um, at a certain round so that's the reason for the round tracker so again the timer phase you advance the timer but not in the first round then the next thing that happens is the uh, commando planning phase and the first thing that happens there is any adrenaline that commandos had spent on the um, on their previous turns would get transferred over to the overseer now again at the beginning of the game the uh, commandos haven't taken any turns so they have no adrenaline to uh, transfer to the overseer but that's why he starts with a certain amount of uh, adrenaline or energy in his energy pool all right, next, the commanding officer will assign initiative, which basically determines the turn order of each of the commandos. So the commanding officer <clears throat> is always the team leader. If he's um, one, of the, uh, one of the commandos in play, if not, then um, the next commanding officer is the countermeasure specialist. If neither of them is in play, then it's the heavy support specialist followed by the rifleman, and then finally the reconnaissance specialist. So I do have the team leader, so <clears throat> he would assign an initiative card to each of the players to determine their turn order. And these are the initiative cards, so whoever is playing the team leader, let's say he's going to have the rifleman go first. Um, he'll have the uh, countermeasure specialist go second, and he'll be third. So... All right, now we've assigned initiative. So the next thing that happens is each um, commando will, well, if I could pick these up, they'll choose the stance they're going to use for the round. So like these are the rifleman's stance cards. So they determine, like, so if he chooses the prone stance, you get an ability, and then it also determin determines your movement and your defenses. So if he chooses this stance for the, for the round then he only has a movement of one when he takes a move action meaning he can move one space he has a defense against uh, range attacks of five and a defense against melee attacks of two and then he can spend a maximum of five adrenaline on his turn whereas if he takes the double time stance uh, he has a movement of four every time he takes a move action but his uh, ranged defense goes down to three, although his melee defense goes up to four. And finally, the cautious advance. Um, he has a movement of two each time he takes a movement action, a ranged defense of four, and a melee defense of three. Again, you get a different little power there. And has a max adrenaline he can spend with this stance of six. So at this time, each player will choose what stance they want and put it in their stance section on the board here. So let me do that. All right, so uh, the rifleman chose cautious advance. Um, the countermeasure specialist chose cautious advance. And the team leader chose commanding. Um, the reason I chose that gives him less movement, but uh, all commandos within a five-space aura, and an aura is just within 
five spaces within five spaces around him ignoring wall these red uh, spaces on the tiles are considered walls so you know they can block movement and um, help hinder line of sight um, so anyway but an aura doesn't care about uh, walls or anything like that so if it's within five spaces then you know for him then uh, any commando within five spaces gains an additional black die when rolling for attacks so all right so then after uh, stances are chosen then starting in initiative order each commando will uh, take their actions and the possible actions they can take are uh, move which will cost one adrenaline so remember he has a, a max adrenaline with this stance he has a max adrenaline of six so if he takes a move action then because that has a cost of one adrenaline he just puts that on his player mat or somewhere in his play area um, so he spends one now because of this stance he can move up to two spaces now when you're moving you can you can move um, one diagonal with a movement but that's it so he could move one two or one two or one two now either at the beginning or the end of your movement you have to choose your facing so each figure will have now you can see my pitiful little paint job I kinda tried to paint that chevron um, there but each of the figures will have a little chevron on one side and that's their facing and that will help determine line of sight so again he could move you know one two and then set his facing like so forth so again movement cost one and then you can move um, up to your total uh, movement depending on your stance you can move through um, friendly figures but you cannot move through enemy figures unless uh, there's some uh, powers that you can get or that enemies have that allow them um, to move through an enemy figure but normally you can only move through friendly figures and again you can't move through walls um, or between if there was um, if there was another wall here you couldn't move between two walls all right. Another thing you can do for one adrenaline is if you are on or adjacent to one of these um, investigate markers, and of course adjacent could be diagonal. Um, if you're on or adjacent to one of these invest, you can spend one adrenaline to um, draw one of these investigate cards, which will give you some item. You know, which you know it'll tell you what it is. Then you can put that in your, you know, with your kit or whatever and then you discard this investigate token all right another thing you can do for one adrenaline is open a door so a uh, commando cannot move through a door he can a commando can be on a space there on a door marker but he couldn't move past this door without opening it so if you're on or adjacent to a door marker you can spend one adrenaline or when I say spend you take one from the pool again and put it on your um, mat and you can only spend up to the maximum allowed by your stance but you can spend one adrenaline to attempt to open a door so when you say you're opening a door then the overseer will flip the door over and if it's just unlocked like that then the tiles removed and you can um, move through um, but if there's one that like this one you try to open it and it says short circuit so it says the commando who opens this door takes one wound so it would be open but uh, he would take a wound now there's another type that we put on here which is locked so if you uh, commando tried to open this door he has to pass a three intelligence uh, challenge so when you have a challenge like that that uses a stat 
you can look at the player's mat. So, for instance, this team leader has a vitality or health of five. That's how many wounds he can take. He has an intelligence of two. So that's how many dice he would roll um, trying to pass an intelligence test and a strength of three. And that's how many dice he would roll if he was trying to pass a uh, strength test. So for this one, the locked... Um, it says, you know, it has to pass a three intelligence test. So the team leader would roll two black dice. And in this case, I got one, two, three successes. So I would pass that and then I could remove this door and that door would be open. Now, when you do open a door, so say a commando opened this door, then at that time, if the... Uh, room stack there would be resolved by the overseer so he would take these room cards and they have a priority so starting in priority order priority one first he would resolve these room cards so this first one is faulty intel intel flip over a faulty intel tile in this room so this room happens to have a faulty Intel vent icon on it. So you would flip this tile over. Now, if it was a tile that didn't have any faulty Intel icons on it, um, then you wouldn't flip it over. But since this one does, you would flip it. Like so. And put it back. And now a, uh, that reveals that there's a vent in this room. And vent, um, vents can be printed on tiles like this and revealed with a faulty intel. Or they can be tokens that get put on the map. But the overseer can spawn um, enemies from vents. So, alright, so that's what we would do. We would flip this faulty intel uh, icon on this tile. We do flip it. So now we've resolved that room card. And then we would resolve this room, room card, or, or the overseer would. So he would spawn two rogue clones and one warrior in this room. And he can put them on any space in this room except for those with a wall. So on any of these four corners. So um, the rogue clones are these. So two rogue clones and one rogue warrior. So, you know, he could just put them anywhere. And of course, the, again, they do have a facing. So he would want to be aware of the facing. Um, if he wanted to attack, be able to attack the uh, enemies that just, or the, well, his enemies, the commandos that just opened that door. So then that room um, tile stack is resolved. And some room cards, you know, may, you know, depending on what we put out, may spawn other creatures or reveal an objective um, tile and then you'd place the objective tile as we talked about. It may place uh, corrosive gas or um, some other anyway, some other hazard. Another action the commandos that can take is um, for one um, adrenaline they can trade. Some of these investigate cards they have this uh, trade icon on them so if one commando had this and he was adjacent to another commando he could trade that to another commando by spending one uh, adrenaline okay uh, another and probably one of the most important things a commando can do is attack and that costs two adrenaline so a commando would spend uh, two adrenaline again you can't spend more than your max adrenaline to make an attack and to make an attack you can if you're adjacent to the enemy you can do a melee attack then you can see most of these commandos um, for their basic combat knife they would roll three black dice if their speed is four or higher remember that's determined by your stance right now his speed is two so his speed is not higher so he doesn't get to roll an additional um, but it says an additional red die so the black die <clears throat> are your basic attack dice and um, the red die have a little bit better chance to hit um, than the black die so you can do a melee attack if you're adjacent to an enemy or you can do a uh, ranged attack 
whether you're adjacent or not if you want to use your ranged weapon. And of course the rifleman, uh, he took his uh, basic enhanced um, M501 weapon, but they all, all the, if he didn't, all the uh, commandos come with the basic. This one rolls four black dice and has a range of five, where this one uh, rolls three black dice and one red dice, which is actually better and has a range of eight. But this weapon lets you target, um, if, if there's two enemies adjacent, it lets you attack both of them. Um, you know, it lets you make a second uh, free attack against uh, the adjacent enemy. And um, if the enemies you're attacking are clones, then you actually roll four red dice instead of four black dice. And both the enemy types we're playing in this mission are clones. The regular uh, basic uh, weapon of the countermeasure specialist is an M14, which has a range of 8 and it has a special power. You ignore EMI and stealth. Um, those are a tile may have uh, EMI, I guess electromagnetic interference which would be uh, this icon. So if there was a faulty Intel um, icon on this tile, which this should have some room stack on it, if uh, this had a faulty Intel and it got flipped over, then that would have um, an EMI icon on it. And so this tile would have EMI. And EMI, um, if your target that you're shooting at is uh, at least has at least four spaces of EMI tile between you and them then uh, you lose your line of sight to that target and you can't attack it or if the commando making the attack or the enemy um, that he's attacking um, is on an EMI tile um, and less than four spaces in between um, the attacker and the target then um, you have to remove one black die from your attack roll. Or if there's no black die, you're only rolling red dice, then you have to remove one red die from your attack roll. And uh, so anyway, this weapon ignores EMI and stealth. And stealth, if uh, I think these rogue clones, um, they have stealth, they have stealth ability, and that just means you have to be within four spaces of them to make an attack. But again, this weapon here uh, ignores that. And finally, the team leader has just the M18. It's got a range of eight, and then uh, if you're not adjacent to an enemy, you can increase your adrenaline by one to add one red dice to the attack. Uh, but again, you. Uh, can't go over your max adrenaline. So when you're going to make an attack, um, of course, first you have to check your facing and make sure that your enemy is <clears throat> in your field of vision, which just goes out in a V from uh, your facing. So any of these enemies would be in his field of vision. Then you have to check line of sight, which can be a little wonky for the rules for line of sight. You uh, you count the shortest path to your target. Um, you can use diagonals as long as they all go the same direction. And if the shortest path doesn't pass through a door or a wall or uh, some other thing that would block line of sight, then you have line of sight. So in that case, it's easy. You know, his shortest path is one, two, three. Um, so that doesn't block line of sight. He could attack that guy. Where it gets a little tricky is say this were the case you might think because that's a wall that his line of sight would be blocked to this creature but the shortest path um there's you know you have one two three which goes through a uh, wall so that wouldn't be legal but you do have one two three so uh, both paths are three so you do have a shortest path that is not an illegal path so he does have line of sight to that guy um, 
So it's just a little a little weird. Um, but anyway, as long as one of your shortest paths does not go through a wall um, or a door or something like that, then you do have line of sight and you can shoot. So we'll just go back to our original example. We'll say the team leader decides he's going to um, attack this rogue clone. So he would have to, to make an attack, he would have to spend two adrenaline, and then he's going to use his M18, so that's three black dice and one red dice. Now he could, um, because he's not adjacent to the enemy, he could increase his adrenaline by one to add one red dice. But we'll just say he's not going to do that. But you got to kind of keep track or all the players need to know their um, kit abilities because the countermeasure specialist has this guidance ability um, that says you and commandos within one space of you roll an additional black die for ranged attack. Well, the... Uh, countermeasure specialist is here so the um, team leader making the attack is within one space so he would get an additional black die because of that and then the team leader um, does have this enhanced targeting so he can re-roll one black die from each of his ranged attacks so if he doesn't hit um, he can re-roll that uh, one of his black die. So, all right, we've got our dice pool. It's going to be four black dice and one red dice. And we roll that. And so you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, to hit a rogue clone um, with, with a ranged attack, you just need four. Now, again, he had that stealth ability, so I had to be within four to make the attack, but I was within three. You know, my range was three, so I can make the attack. I got six. His uh, range defense is four, and his health is only one, so he, he that uh, alien would be killed. Now, I've only spent two adrenaline, so I could spend another two adrenaline to make another attack on that guy. But anyway, that's how uh, combat works, and it's pretty much the same for the... Uh, aliens attacking the commandos you can see that the rogue clones can only make a melee attack it's got that so they have to be adjacent and the warrior clone um, he has you see two ranged attacks uh, with a range of six and you wonder why there's two that both have roll the same amount um, three black dice and I'm not exactly sure of the reason of that, but he does have this see. I guess it's this is in this seeker box, and that says if this figure does not move this turn, it can make an attack against any target within the range of this weapon, ignoring line of sight. So I guess the seeker doesn't have to have line of sight, but the coil gun does. I don't know if they necessarily had to list that as two different. Uh, weapons or if they could have just put the text box here but anyway you can see he rolls three black dice for his attack and again I showed earlier that the, depending on the stance of the uh, um, commando determines what their uh, range defense or melee defense is it, it's different depending on their stance if a commando ever takes wounds equal to his health um, then he is downed. You know, the, I showed that if the uh, aliens take damage equal to their health, then they're just removed, you know, put back in the uh, supply for the um, overseer. But if a commando ever takes wounds, and, and each time a commando takes a wound, he puts a wound marker on his sheet. But if his wounds ever equal or exceed his health, then he is what's called downed. And when a commando's downed, he'll replace his figure with one of these downed tokens wherever he was downed at. And then he takes a downed stance card or downed card and puts that on his stance. And then the only actions he can take when he's downed is a, a move action. She can move up to two. And uh, normally before somebody's downed, you could, you know, use your med pack kit if you're adjacent to them, um, spend two adrenaline, and 
uh, roll a red die and heal as many wounds as the red die. But once you're down, the med pack cannot be used on you. And you can't do anything but move. But one of the actions um, another uh, commando can do, since they can't use a med pack on you, they can revive you. So if a commando um, is adjacent to another downed commando, they can spend two um, adrenaline, again, not going over the max they can spend. And if they do that, they do a, that's a revive, they can do the revive action. So the downed commando would replace the downed marker with his figure. Um, but he has to keep the downed stance until the next commando phase where they choose a stance and then he can um, um, choose his new stance and recover remove one of the wound tokens from him so he'll still have you know several wound tokens on him he just removes one another action that a commando can take um, when they're not downed of course <laughs> is uh, a heal action so they can spend two uh, adrenaline, put two adrenaline on their sheet, and that allows them to heal one wound. Um, and that's on themselves. The med packs are for healing uh, other commandos. The uh, rifleman who has this advanced med pack, you know, he can heal other commandos again for an action spending two um, adrenaline, but his heal action, where normally it would cost him to, uh, two to heal one token, his heal actions only cost him one adrenaline to heal one wound token since he has this advanced med pack. One other thing I didn't mention about when you are downed, when you're um, um, killed and downed, all the adrenaline you've spent uh, is immediately transferred over to the earth that's on your sheet that you've spent for your turns is immediately transferred over to the um, overseer. You know, normally that happens at the beginning of the commando phase where they transfer adrenaline, but if you're downed, all your adrenaline immediately transfers over to the overseer. So that pretty much covers all the actions that the uh, commandos can do. So once the commandos have all taken their turn, then we go to the overseer phase. So the first thing the overseer will do is refresh his dashboard. Now on the uh, first turn he may not have any um, parts of the dashboard he needs to refresh but as, as the dashboard takes or as the overseer takes actions he has to pay costs in uh, energy or adrenaline from the pool of tokens that he's gained um, that the commandos had given him, you know, um, at the start of their previous turn or, you know, the minimum amount that he, uh, started with. So, you know, he has to pay a cost kind of just like the commandos did. So a cost to do this, he can do this action on the commandos turn, you know, interrupt, force a commando to reroll an attack. But to do that, it has a cost of three adrenaline or energy, so he would have to put that in there. Now, anytime he wants to take one of these actions, the uh, energy well, or, or just the well or adrenaline well, has to be empty. So if he's taken, you know, if he took this action on the commando's turn by spending three adrenaline in there, then that action is not available to him to take again because there's adrenaline tokens in the well. So at the beginning of the overseer's um, turn, overseer phase, he refreshes the dashboard. And to do that, you look at the number here to the side and you remove that many tokens from the well. So when he's refreshing the dashboard, he would remove two um, tokens and those just go back to the bank and um, this action can still not be taken because um, it's empty now some of them have this committed cost which you can see down here like this action if you still have 
an adrenaline in your well here as the overseer, you can take this action again, but you have to pay this committed cost. So instead of paying the normal cost of three, you would have to pay five. Some actions don't allow that. You can see a lot of these actions have no committed cost. So you, well, this one does. But if they don't, then there, you just cannot take that action again as long as there's still um, tokens in there. So again, the first thing on the overseer phase is refresh the dashboard. So you would go through each of these um, adrenaline wells or each of these possible actions and remove the amount of tokens shown in the refresh space. Um, that one's an asterisk, so that one says the number of commandos that started the mission. So in this three commando uh, game I'm playing, you would remove three um, adrenaline from that well, too. So anyway, that's the first thing you do in the overseer phase. Then the uh, next thing the overseer um, can do is um, use his dashboard abilities, um, in including spawn um, these actions that he has that allow him to spawn reinforcements. So like this one, for every two adrenaline you spend for the ready cost, which is this cost here, um, you can spawn a clone at an enemy passage tile. Now, currently, um, as the game stands at the beginning here, there uh, are no enemy passage tiles on the board, but some will be placed it depends on the mission as you see for this mission that we're playing um, as the commandos explore rooms any room that does not have an objective in it when it's explored it will end up getting a uh, enemy passage tile put on the end so we know we put an objective in this room and we put an objective in this room so when that, those rooms get explored the objective tile will be placed but this room, um, when it gets explored, it will get an enemy passage tile placed there because there's no objective there. And when this room gets explored, it will get an enemy passage tile placed there. And you can see it says that here. Enemy passage will be placed in objective zones for rooms without objectives. So he, at the early state of this mission, um, he cannot use that to... Um, put reinforcements because there isn't a um, enemy passage tile on the on the map yet but he has this other spawn ability um, to spawn up to two clones at a vent and uh, we do have a vent that um, came up here when we had to flip this tile um, because of the room cards um, as you remember earlier I showed we had to flip that tile because it had that faulty intel. So now there is a vent there and there will be uh, other things that will put vents in um, other rooms. As I said, they can be placed with a token as well as those that are printed on the board. And the other seer has other actions he can take. Again, some that are on the commando's turn. If that says interrupt then he can take those actions um, on the commando's turn. You know, as I showed some of these, um, this one here, another one he can take on the commando's turn. It's got a pretty high cost of 10 adrenaline, though. Um, this allows to refresh every other dashboard ability once. So um, I said at the beginning of the overseer phase, you refresh um, all the tiles by removing you know the amount of adrenaline shown in this if you take this action it lets you uh, refresh all these tiles again one time but again that's got a pretty high cost but when you refresh the next turn you get all 10 back so anyway that's when the adre the overseer can take actions um you know other than the ones that are an, an interrupt ability and besides uh, taking the actions on his dashboard for enemies that he's already got placed on the map, um, which, you know, currently in our example, we have uh, the one um, warrior clone and one rogue clone. So 
So if he's got uh, enemies on the map, he can activate them by spending adrenaline. So he can e either spend uh, one adrenaline just to um, move them. And again, their movement allowance, um, both of these clone um, can move up to six spaces with one move action. So he could spend one adrenaline just to move them. Or you can spend their... Uh, activation cost their combat activation cost which on both of these happens to be one adrenaline so you would probably always just want to do the combat activation with these anyway since it's the same cost as just the move activation cost but with the combat activation um, which costs one adrenaline for both of these um, types of units that he has available in this mission you can move and attack so you could move up to six spaces and then make an attack so of course the uh, rogue clones have to be adjacent because um, they only do a melee attack um, but the warrior clone can make a ranged attack so um, besides doing the dashboard abilities um, he can then activate any units he has on the board now you have to um, do your spawn abilities prior to um, activating your um, units on the board. You can't activate your units on the board and then use your spawn abilities to spawn some more. And then finally, after the Overseer's activated all his uh, enemies on the board, then he has to discard down to, if he still has a um, more than 10 adrenaline in his adrenaline pool up here he has to discard down to 10 um, but otherwise if he has 10 or less he doesn't have to discard anything and one thing I did want to mention um, clone figures like the ones on this mission the warrior clone and rogue clone they can move through uh, vent spaces so it allows them to quickly move across the board or more quickly than the uh, the uh, commandos can so they can move from a vent space to another vent space and the way that works is um, say the overseer wanted to move this clone so he spends an activation uh, you know an adrenaline to activate him the clone he has six movement he could move one into the vent then the next tile is only one move and then another move to move to the vent in this room so that's a total of one two three and then he could come out four five you know six however so when they move using vents they enter a vent and then each tile that they move is only uh, you know one space but they must be able to exit at another vent um, within their movement but that does allow clone figures to move around uh, very quickly if you have uh, vents um, on the tiles you know on the map and since I covered combat already, like I said earlier, combat is pretty much the same for the enemies, the, uh, the overseers figures as it is for the commandos. So I think I've pretty much covered uh, how the game plays, so why don't we go through a couple of example turns and uh, wrap it up. So I think what I'll do is kind of just uh, pick up where I had left off, where... Um, I had had the uh, rifleman open this door and that exposed those room cards with the recon patrol that uh, spawned these clones and also uh, flipped the, had the faulty intel which f flipped this tile over exposing a vent. But I'll just uh, go over, you know, the first steps that we did as transfer adrenaline. So any adrenaline that the... Uh, commandos had on their sheets from the previous turn would have gone over to the um, overseer's pool but since this was the first turn of the game there was none then uh, 
the commander, which is the team leader, assigned initiative, and then we had the uh, each player selected their stance. You know, cautious advance, cautious advance, and commanding. And so for the rifleman's first turn, he opened a door, which was here, and uh, there it he, it was unlocked. So he just got to open it. And again, that, then the cards that were exposed there were the recon patrol and the faulty intel. So uh, that's what's happened so far. So it, um, it's still the rifleman's turn. He's only spent the one adrenaline he can spend up to six. Now, you may not always want to spend the total amount of adrenaline that you're allowed to because remember, all the adrenaline that you spend is going to get transferred over to the... Um, overseer allowing him to take more actions all right so the rifleman um, sees these clones here since he opened the door so he's going to go ahead and make an attack um, which this is kind of the same attack we did in our example he's going to use his m501 so that's going to cost him two adrenaline and as i said with the m501 when you make an attack if possible, choose a second target adjacent to the primary target and in your line of sight. Well, there is actually two clones adjacent. If, if this is my primary target, I can choose one of these since they're both adjacent to him as my second target because they're both in my line of sight. And uh, the second target does not have to be within range, but they both are within range. I have a range of five. And this one's one, two, three, and this one's one, two, three also. Um, so you make a free attack against the second target as part of the same action. It ignores stealth, um, which again, remember, that just means you have to be within four for a ranged attack. And if either target is a clone, roll four red dice instead of four black dice. So um, they are both clones, so I'll roll four red dice. And remember, the countermeasure specialist is adjacent to me, and so you and commandos within one space of you roll an additional black dice. So I'm going to get four red dice and one black dice. And these rogue clones have a range defense of four. So this first roll will be against uh, this clone. And I got a one, two, three, four, five, so that kills him. So he's removed. Now I get to make the same attack against that other rogue clone that's adjacent to him. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I easily, I murdered that guy. So he's dead. All right, well, so far I've spent uh, three. I think I'll spend one more uh, to do a move and move two spaces. So here's my one, and I'm going to move uh, one, two. Now, remember, again, you can move one uh, diagonal in, during your movement. All right, well, next in initiative is the countermeasure specialist. Um, he's right here. So I think he's going to spend one to move, and he's going to move two. Now, the, the overseer, he decides he's going to do an interrupt and make an attack with an enemy against an acting commando. Now, that's going to cost four. He's got six that he started with. That's going to cost four of his uh, um, adrenaline. Um, but he's going to do that. So that cost four. I paid that. Now he gets to make an attack with his uh, warrior clone. And his warrior clone rolls three black dice, so he's going to roll those. <laughs> he rolled all blanks. Okay, that was terrible. All right, well, now the countermeasure specialist is pissed that this guy shot at him, and he was a poor shot anyway, so he's going to spend two adrenaline to make an attack. Now, he has this M14, which gives him one red and three black. Plus, he gets to benefit from this guidance also. You and commandos within one space of you roll an additional black. So he's going to get one red and four black. All right, here's his roll. 
one, two, three, four. This guy, the warrior clone's range range defense is only three, so he kills him. And I think he's going to spend one more adrenaline to move again, and he can only move two. Uh, I think he's going to head up toward this uh, investigate. So now he's adjacent to it. He could. He's only spent four adrenaline. He can spend six, so he's going to spend one more adrenaline to uh, investigate here. So he draws an investigate card, and we got tracer ammo. Discard this card to reroll one of your basic ranged attacks. And this is a card that could be traded if he wanted to. And remember, that costs one adrenaline if you want to trade that. So he'll just put that here with his stuff. I'm <laughs> kind of out of room. But we'll put that here with his stuff. And now we discard this uh, investigate token. All right, well, that's all he's going to do. He spent five adrenaline. He could spend one more, but that would just be one more for the overseer to get. So we'll go on to the third player, who is the team leader. Well, he's just going to move. There's nobody for him to attack or anything, so he's going to spend one to move. He's in commanding stance, so he can only move two. One, two. He'll move again. Spend another one. One, two. Um, now they got to kind of decide where, which way are we going to go? This way, this way. Now the, you know, the problem with playing this solo is I know there's an objective here and I know there's an objective here, but if you're not playing it solo, you wouldn't really know. So, uh, you just have to decide where you're going to go. So the team leader being the commander, he says, well, we're right here by this, uh, I think I'm going to move over there. So he's going to spend another one to move again. He's going to move and change his facing here. Um, and he'll spend one more to open this door. So another adrenaline. That's four that he spent. He can spend a total of five. So now the overseer, I say I'm going to open this door. The overseer flips this over. It says locked. And, uh, of course, it requires a three intelligence check to open it. So uh, I do have an, the team leader has an intelligence of two, so he rolls two black dice. Two. I only got a one, so I failed to open it. So that door is still locked. And now, uh, you know, he could spend one more to try to open it again, but he thinks he's going to hold off for this turn and wait till next turn. He doesn't want to be giving... The overseer that many uh, on his next turn so the uh, commandos say they're all done so now we go to the overseer phase so the first thing he does is refresh um, any of his dashboard tiles the only one he spent anything in is the surprise attack so he refreshes two of those so he still can't do this one again unless he wants to pay the committed cost of six instead of the regular four so now he does any dashboard abilities that he wants to do. Well, we know he can't um, do this one to spawn because he doesn't have an enemy passage tile currently. He could do this one to spawn two clones at a vent. Now, when you spawn at a vent, um, you can sp sp spawn a clone on it or adjacent to it. So he has one, two, three, four, five possible spaces he can spawn. Oh, actually more, six, seven. But, unfortunately, that's going to cost uh, four, and he's only got two because he spent um, four earlier to do this. So, he really doesn't have much of anything he can do with only two. Now, of course, next time, on his next turn, he's going to have more because all of these tokens, uh, adrenaline that was um, spent by the commandos on their turns at the beginning of their phase that's all going to transfer over to the overseer so right now there's not much of anything that the overseer is going to be able to do so he's just going to say he's done so next thing we do is go to the timer phase so we advance the timer now we're on the second turn or second round 
then we go to the commandos planning phase and the first thing we do is transfer adrenaline so all this adrenaline that they spent if I can pick it up on their turns these go over to the <laughs> maybe let me do this and I'll let me put the camera down I'll be back okay so all this adrenaline transfers over to the overseer so now he has a lot more to spend uh, on his next uh, turn now if if the commandos hadn't taken that many actions if um, you always have to transfer at least the minimum um, for the mission which remember for this mission the minimum was the number of commandos times two it showed that in the mission rules so he would always get at least six but usually there's going to be more because the commandos are going to take uh, you know more than that many so anyway the overseer now has a lot bigger pool for his turn or for during doing uh, what interrupts that he can do on the turns of the commandos Okay, the next thing in the commando planning phase is the uh, uh, assign initiative. So the team leader will assign initiative. So since he's right here by this door, um, he's going to go ahead and make him first because he wants to open that door. So he's going to make himself first. And uh, then he'll leave the countermeasure specialist second and he'll make the rifleman third this time and now they're going to choose their stance so I think he's going to keep commanding but since the countermeasure specialist and the rifleman need to move up closer to that room I think they're going to change their change their stances so the countermeasure specialist he changed his stance to reckless advance that lets him move four but his melee attacks cost a um, one adrenaline instead of the normal amount which would be two but he removes one black die from any, a, a ranged attack and the rifleman he switched to double time which gives him a movement of four um, and he can make one move on his turn without increasing adrenaline so that's pretty good but of course it um, lowers the range defense I think than what they had previously Alright, so now they'll take their actions, starting with team leader as he's first, so he's going to spend one adrenaline to try to open that door again. He doesn't get it, I think we're going to have the countermeasure specialist try because he has an intelligence of three, and actually a rifleman has an intelligence of three. You would think the team leader might have a higher <laughs> intelligence, but I guess not. So anyway, he rolls two black dice to try to open that door again, and he gets it. He got four we only needed three uh, to open it so that door is unlocked now the overseer will reveal these room cards and do them in priority order so the first one we come up with is the a-lift so it says place the a-lift objective tile in this room in the room's objective zone now that room's objective zone is right here so we'll take this a-lift tile and we place it right there in the room's objective zone. All right, the next priority two is uh, corrosive gas. Place up to nine corrosive gas markers in this room to form one cloud. So the rule with placing corrosive gas markers is they all have to, each um, corrosive gas marker you placed in there, has to touch at least two other corrosive gas markers and that does and not diagonally so orthogonally so according to this I can place up to nine so let's see how many I can get let me place those well I can only get eight um, the rules for placing the corrosive gas is again I said they each one must touch at least two other ones um, so I couldn't put one here because it would only I couldn't put the ninth one because if I put one here It would only be adjacent to one if I put one here. It would only be adjacent to one again It can't be diagonal and you can't put one on objective space and you can't put one on walls So I managed to get eight now the rules for corrosive gas if a commando um, When a commando moves into a corrosive gas cloud he takes a wound and if he begins his turn 
um, in a corrosive gas cloud, he takes a wound. He doesn't take a wound for every tile he moves through with a corrosive gas, but um, um, when he moves in, each time he moves into the cloud, he takes one wound, or if he begins his turn in the cloud, he takes one wound. All right, so we've placed that cor corrosive glass, gas, and the last part of this room card says uh, spawn three rogue clones in this room. Now, they're not... Uh, affected by the gas so they can go in there with the gas so three rogue clones all right I will just uh, put them like this um, one thing I don't know if I mentioned when I was talking about combat um, but other figures do not block block line of sight so um, your own figures or enemy figures do not block line of sight All right, well, um, still the team leader's turn. He's just taken the one um, action. So he is going to spend another action to move again. And again, he can only move two. So he's going to move one, two. Uh, one other thing to mention in this mission, uh, once the A-lift is found, which we just found it, after the room contained the A-lift objective is revealed, the speed of all clones becomes 7. So that's just increasing their speed by 1. But anyway, I thought I would mention that. Um, corrosive gas does not block line of sight either, so uh, he's going to go ahead and spend 2 to take an attack action. So... You know, he can spend up to five. This is four. So he's going to do a ranged attack with his M18. So he gets three black dice and one red dice. Um, he's not going to get any other bonuses. So. All right. Three black dice and one red dice. Um, he's going to target this clone directly in front of him. So a range of three. And... He gets a three. Unfortunately, he needs a four, so he does not hit. But he does have this enhanced targeting, so he can re-roll one black dice from each of his ranged attacks. All right, so I get to re-roll one of my black dice that got a miss. And now I got a five, so he does get to hit, and this guy is eliminated. All right, um, so we're going to go on. He's not going to spend. He still has one more he could spend, but he's not going to do that because that would, well, really, there's not a reason at this point to move into the A-lift because we need the objective. So instead of my guys going in here toward the A-lift and moving through that gas, I think we're going to go another direction. So countermeasure specialist, um, he's going to spend a move and he can move four. Or he's going to spend an adrenaline and he's going to move four so he's going to go one two and then he's going to spend one to open that door so the overseer flips this over jammed commando must pass a three strength challenge to open so let's see what his strength is it is two so he'll roll two black dice and fails. All right, he'll try one more, so he'll spend another adrenaline. Try to open that again. Roll two black dice. Fails. All right, I think he's just going to stop at that point. So we'll go on to the rifleman. He's going to move. Again, he's on double time, so he can move up to four. Um, he's going to go one, two... That says one diagonal, three, four. Then he will move again. One, two, and then he'll spend one try to open that door. Now his strength is three, so he gets to roll three black dice. <laughs> Good God. And he fails. Uh, I think we're going to stop right there for the uh, um, commandos. Alright, so we go to the overseer phase. First thing he does is refresh his dashboard. So here he gets to remove these two 
That's the only ones he spent. Now he gets to spawn enemies and take his other um, actions. Again, he still can't use this to spawn because there's no enemy passage tile revealed yet. He can spawn some with this one, spawn up, spawn up to two clones at a vent. So he can pay four. One, two, three, four. And uh, it can be any kind of clone. So we'll say he's going to do one of each at this vent. So he'll do one here and one here. And he can then pay two adrenaline tokens directly to the bank instead of putting them in here to spawn a clone at another vent. Well, unfortunately, I don't have another vent, so I can't do that. All right. All right, so at this point, I think he's just going to start activating clones. So he's going to activate a rogue clone, a combat activation, but it costs one adrenaline. So he's going to spend that, and he will activate this guy. So he's going to move one and attack him. Um, he's adjacent to him, so he gets three black dice to use his claws. And the team leader's melee defense is only two when he's in um, commanding. So uh, yeah, we've only got to roll two successes with uh, that clone. And he got four, so that's a hit. So now the uh, team leader has to take a wound. All right, so I think now we'll activate this other clone. So he will spend one adrenaline out of his pool to activate that guy. So he's going to move one, two, three, and change his facing so he can do a melee attack against him. And he got three. Again, we only needed two. So that makes the team leader have to take another wound. He's got two out of the five. Uh, once he gets five, he'll be downed. So, might have been a bad idea. Maybe we should have attacked those guys instead of going to try to open this door. But anyway, all right, he's going to open, he's going to spend another adrenaline to activate this clone. And he's going to move one and attack this guy, which is the countermeasure specialist. Now, his melee defense is four, so that might be a little trickier. Maybe he should have gone and just attacked the team leader again. Oh, but he did get a four. One, two, three, four. So now the countermeasure specialist takes a wound. And we still have one more to activate. And he does have a weapon. He didn't have to be adjacent. So we'll just say he's going to attack the team leader. The range is one, two, three, four, five. Um, his weapon has a range of six. So... He gets three black dice. Now, since it's not a melee attack, well, his range defense and commanding is still only two. So even a roll of two is going to be enough to give him a wound. Oh, well, we failed. But I have this dashboard ability for six, make an additional attack with an enemy during its combat action. And I reduce the cost um, of this ability by two if used on a clone. Well, I am using it on a clone, so I only have to pay four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to use that and uh, make that attack again. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. All right, so that's still a failure. All right, so I've activated all the enemies I have on the board. Um, I think that's pretty much all that uh, the Overseer wants to do. So uh, I guess that's going to end his turn. So I think we'll wrap it up there. You kind of see how the game works. We've revealed some rooms, um, done some combat. Um, so I hope that gives you a good idea. And I think I'll wrap up my turn examples there. Hope I didn't make too many mistakes or any mistakes, hopefully. Um, so I'll just give you a little idea of what I think about this. It's definitely not for playing solo because, as I mentioned, I mean, when you're playing solo, you know where the objectives are, which a big part of the game is for the commandos not to know that so they don't know exactly where to go. And uh, another problem with playing this solo is there's so many abilities of each commando and so many abilities the 
overseer has um it's hard to remember oh yeah i could have used the overseer's ability to do that oh, oh i should have where if each person just has to keep track of their own abilities they can say hey don't forget i have this and you can use that bonus or whatever so that i i definitely will not ever play this again solo it's just not good solo um and that's how i've played it both times when i played this back in 2016 I played it by myself as a learning game, thinking I was going to play it with some of my gaming buddies, but that obviously never ended up happening. Um, so I think I would like to try this again with other players. It, it, uh, even though the, some of the line of sight rules are a little wonky, I, I may tweak that, you know, just house rule that line of sight stuff. But other than that, um, it seems like with playing with multiple players, it might be uh, might be okay. I don't know about the balance. Um, when I played this time, um, the commandos won. It seemed pretty easily, but I looked at my logged play back in 2016, and the commandos lost then. So I'm not sure... You know, maybe it is balanced or or not. I don't know. With just two plays five years apart, I have no idea. So anyway, uh, I can't say one way or the other where the game is good or bad until really I've played it. Uh, well, it's not bad. I can say that for sure. But whether it's something I would really like to play a, not, a lot um, or not, I can't say until I've at least had a chance to play it with somebody else so I definitely won't get rid of it um, until I've had a chance to play it with somebody else and uh, determine you know if I like it with multiple players but solo definitely not anyway that's it thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it